My name is Robin Mohelner. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in the state of California, living with bipolar disorder type 1. I work for an organization called the Life Adjustment Team, and I'm also in private practice as a therapist seeing clients myself. This video is on the stages of mania, and I'm going to tell this story so you really understand it by using my own experience. And I want to let you know that I had my first, my first full-blown, and this is the only full-blown manic episode when I was 16 years old, and... I'm going to tell you the stages, step by step, of what I went through um, in the mania, so you can have a better understanding of what it is. So the first stage is called hypomania. And what that means is it means mild mania. And to understand whether or not you're experiencing hypomania, we look at a few things. We look at can a person function in their daily responsibilities, in their daily self-care, in their daily relationships, and in their work and school. So, I'll tell you the first key warning sign that I was entering hypomania. And that was, I was having difficulty sleeping. I was having difficulty sleeping because I had just gotten my driver's license. I was more, I was the most excited kid on the planet. I'd been wanting it forever, and I had just gotten it, and it triggered this episode. So, the, the next thing I'll share with you that happens is bipolar disorder when you're having an episode, it throws off what's called your circadian rhythm, which is your biological clock. So here's what I mean. It threw off my sex drive. It increased my sex drive significantly. My desire for sex was significant. Another, th another thing it threw off was appetite. My change in my, desi in my desire for food decreased. I would forget to eat. The next thing it changed was my level of energy. I'm a naturally exuberant person, meaning enthusiastic for life. And my ex exuberance during hypomania was excessive to the point that I was bouncing off the walls, making people uncomfortable. Another thing that increased in my energy was my agitation. And what that felt like was this energy was building in my body and it had nowhere to go. So it made me more likely to snap at people, not all people, but my family. Um, the next thing I noticed in my, in my hypo, hypomanic stage was I was obsessed with a goal. Um, I would become pa passionate, and I'll get to that later because it, it, it shows up in the more full-blown mania, but I started to become more and more obsessed with goals and more and more impulsive with goals, meaning I needed to do them now, right now, today, this moment had to happen. Another thing I noticed during the hypomania was that my thoughts began to race. And what that means is they started to jumble a little bit and they started to move faster a little bit, but I was still able to communicate. I was just talking really fast. So that for me was my hypomanic stage. The next stage was what I refer to and my field refers to as the full-blown mania stage. What makes it full-blown mania is the symptoms increase 
to a point where I was no longer able to function in school and work. I was no longer able to take good care of myself. I was no longer able to function in my daily responsibilities. And my relationships were suffering because of these symptoms. So I'll share with, these, with you these symptoms. Um, the first key symptom that let me know that I was in full-blown mania, what now, you know, looking back, is I did not have the need for sleep. Instead of sleeping, I stayed up all night studying every world religion and studying physics and quantum physics. I was doing genius level thinking and I wish I remembered it, but I don't. And during the day at school, because I wasn't able to function at school, school moved too slow for me. All I could do was do these very intricate doodles, these drawings that are so incredibly intricate that I couldn't, I can't duplicate them. Um, I wish I could. I, they, they, they were really powerful drawings. Um, the next thing, I'm just checking my notes, is I began to have my thoughts race even more and faster and become more jumbled. This meant that communication became more difficult for me. I began to repeat myself over and over again because I would have multiple lines of thinking. Um, so instead of having one thought process, I'd have several at once and I'd communicate each of them and have to just fight my mouth to get them out fast enough. The, the next stage that I went through and this, this doesn't happen in order, it's kind of all happening at the same time, but I'm just pointing it out in stages, um, was risk-taking and dangerous behaviors without knowing it. Um, what I did was, I at school, I led a walkout in my chemistry class for two weeks, and I... I didn't feel the teacher was teaching well, and I convinced the entire class to leave the school and protest. Um, I ended up not going back to that class for two weeks. Now, I want you to know something that may not exist anymore, but in the 90s, when bipolar disorder was far more rare in young people, um, my school didn't even notice something was wrong with me until it got really severe. So I, I did a lot of behaviors at school, at my high school, and no one thought anything of it. When it, that wasn't, that was a kind of a, just a stupid behavior. Um, other dangerous behaviors were, I had just gotten my driver's license, and without even being able to feel the speed of the car, I was driving my local streets in my neighborhood at 80 miles per hour and didn't know it until a friend was so scared that he made me stop and he made it get out and drive and he didn't even have a license. He didn't even know how to drive, but he drove safer than I did. And that happened a few times, actually. Um, my sex drive was through the roof uncontrollable to the point that I called every guy that I didn't have a close relationship with and aggressively pursued sex with every guy in my high school. And what ended up happening was I scared the crap out of them and not one person was took me up on it because they knew that something was wrong with me. So I didn't end up having sex with the whole football team and the whole basketball team because I was going insane. 
Now the, the next stage of my mania was possibly the best experience in my life and why so many people crave their mania. One, mania is a lot of fun. But two, I had the most profound spiritual experience of my life. Everything in life, God, the universe, life, everything made sense and I felt so omnipotent, so all-powerful that I felt a part of it. I didn't feel in control of it, but I felt in partnership with God. And I, I truly did believe when I was 16 in this state that I was a prophet. And that's why I said earlier I stayed up all night reading all of the, the books of every religion and studying quantum physics. And that is because that whole time, all night long for several weeks, I was having this spiritual experience. And it was amazing. And I felt incredibly close to God, closer than I've ever felt again in my life. And that's a problem. This, this is why so many people, or one of the reasons why so many people won't take medication is they, they want both the, create, the level of creativity that I share that I experience as well as the spiritual aspect. The next part of mania was very scary. It's defined as psychosis. Um, the reason why I went through every stage of mania is because during the risk-taking behaviors, I, I'll also add during the risk-taking behaviors, I was violent. I was violent with my friend, I was violent with people in public, I wanted to beat up a child for, but that, that's, I wanted to beat up a child. Um, and I was very violent with my mother. Um, during this stage of full-blown mania, I was a very violent, agitated human being. I couldn't contain the energy in my body. But I was 16, and during the, the time when it was the most scary for my family, we were on a vacation, and they weren't able to hospitalize me. They didn't know what was wrong, and the only choice was to either go to jail for a few weeks, or the sheriff, because he knew me, we were on vacation in a small town, because he knew me, the sheriff came and spent the day with me every day. And what happened during that time with my family, when we were in this small town that had no hospital for me, was I became psychotic. And I had hallucinations and delusions um, hallucinations are when you visually or s you sensorily experience things that aren't actually happening. And delusions are when you have beliefs that you truly believe to be true that aren't. And I had both. And I believed that my mom was trying to hurt me. So I was very violent towards my mother. And I also believed that she had locked me up in a part of the house. So I took a hammer to a door that was unlocked, but I believed it was locked. And I hacked away at the door. And when it comes to the delusions I had, I had delusions that I had been raped and I was going through the trauma 
because of these delusions, and the delusions were not true. I had not been raped. I had had no sexual abuse at the age, just none, by at that age, and I had that delusion, um, and I was completely out of control. Mind you, I'm not just having these step by step. I'm having all of these experiences of full-blown mania at the same time. So, the next stage of mania is called, I call it, the peak of mania. And that was when every possible human emotion exploded out of me. Everything from my love for my mom to my hatred of her. You name it. Every motion in between. My regret because I told, you know, I she was able to see I was out of control by this time. I was like crying for my mom to be there for me at the same time wanting to kill her. And that's what happened at the peak of the mania. And then, Honor, we drove home. They, we, they got me home as soon as they possibly could. Um, the hallway in the car, I was horrible. Uh, horrible, threatening to kill my mom the whole way home for, for nine hours. And the next morning I woke up and I was in the deepest depression that I ever experienced in my life to this day. Um, I wasn't able to think. I wasn't able to feel. I wasn't able to move. I wasn't able to function. I basically had become catatonic, which means you just can't even... All I could do is breathe. And... These are the stages of mania. Hypomania, which is mild mania. If you get help during hypomania, you can prevent the full-blown mania. But full-blown mania often requires hospitalization because a person cannot take care of themselves. They can, are at highly high risk of harming themselves and at a high risk of suicide. I was at a high risk for all three and didn't know it because no one knew the signs. No one knew what was going on. So my hope for you is now you know. So now you know that as soon as you have difficulty sleeping, that means you are in danger. You are in danger let your psychiatrist know right away. Prevent it. Prevention is the best thing you can possibly give yourself. And I'll explain why in another video. But I look forward to seeing you soon. And I hope this was useful.